Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, um, first I want to accept the committee amendments. Thank you for them as well, which are clarifying and we accept the amendments. Thank you. Um, one of the positive results, if one can speak about a positive result about a drought uh, for the last five years, is that we really do recognize the importance uh, to our statewide water supply of groundwater and how we need to protect it. Um, we put forward uh, the ground, uh, Sustainable Groundwater and Management Act of 2014 under the leadership of uh, Senator Pavley. Um, Sigma has a major gap in it, very important piece of legislation, but a major gap. As good as it is, um, it will take um, until 2042 uh, to bring certain, to bring basins into um, balance. That is, as much water goes in as comes out uh, and are, we, will be sustainable. But meanwhile, what is happening is uh, many new wells are being dug all over California at an alarming rate. Um, uh, some deliberately before Sigma gets going uh, with very little supervision by the counties who control the permitting, uh, the boards of supervisors. And this is the chart to just show you what's happening and I'm sure it's gotten worse as we go out past 2014 now that Sigma For those has of us with bad passed. eyes, can you explain what that means? It means that since these are, these are counties from Amador, Glen, Sierra, Yolo, San Joaquin, Fresno, um, where this was the uh, well permits being issued by the county, and this is what's happened just since the drought, and it's continued. So instead of having um, 200 permits in the ground, and that's minimal, you would now have an incredible increase of new demands on limited groundwater. So that's the issue. Um, currently, counties um, have the responsibility and the authority uh, to issue well drilling permits. Um, however, well drilling permits, historically and currently, are pretty easy to obtain. They're mostly ministerial, they're over the counter. Um, there is not very much analysis that is done uh, prior to the issuance of a permit. No analysis of the impact on the groundwater basin, whether there is water there sufficient for new demands on that particular area. That's business as usual and we want to stop business as usual. Um, that's what this bill's about. So specifically, 1317 will require cities and counties that overlie the high, the serious ones, the high and medium priority groundwater basins, as, I, as identified by DWR, to perform an analysis of a proposed well to ensure that no pump will create, no well will create further harm, that there is water there. Under 1317, no new drilling, drilling permits may be issued for the 21 critically overdrafted basins that currently exist um, until the county has a well ordinance that governs this in place. So it respects local control, but it also says if you have a problem with putting straws in the ground and making sure you get water out, don't make it worse by putting more straws in the ground until you know the groundwater basin can handle it. Now, some counties have already acted. Um, San Luis Obispo, uh, Obispo, Merced, Stanislas. Glenn and Calusa have put moratoria in effect, which was pretty brave, frankly. Um, and the others have adopted policies and others are considering policy and we support that. We want the local community, the local board of supervisors to exercise um, uh, control over their groundwater basins that are high and medium priority or critically overdrafted. Um, we support their doing that. We want them all to do that. Um, so with me today is Jay Ziegler from the Nature Conservancy and Debbie Orrs with the Community Water Center uh, to speak to this issue. Oh, uh, the bill talks about a conditional use permit. Uh, in our meetings, uh, and I have said this publicly and privately, it doesn't have to be a conditional use permit. I recognize most people, people understand what that is. It's pretty clear. What I'm interested in is a, that the Board of Supervisors, no more ministerial sign, you know, t signing of a permit over the desk in the planning department or the public works department. There has to be a consideration of the condition of the groundwater before you, before you allow in the Board of Supervisors a new well 
another straw, another 10 straws to be put into uh, the ground. This will not affect existing wells, replacement wells, or those that are just de minimis in size. This, these are about, this is about wells that change the water balance in the county. So with, my, with that, I ask for your I vote. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Jay Ziegler with the Nature Conservancy. Um, on behalf of our 100,000 members uh, in California, uh, as you know, we're a science-based organization. There are several reasons why uh, we're here in support of this legislation as an important complement to the implementation of SIGMA in California. First, uh, we are running a chronic water deficit in, in California. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey, Caltech, other um, noted academic authorities estimate we are running, we are emptying our aquifers at a pace of one to two million acre feet a year. Um, and we're not recovering uh, that uh, aquifer capacity. Second, uh, if you go to the department, against a what total number? What percentages of that? I'm told there's 800 million acre feet in the Central Valley. How much, what do we have? When you use that number, it's only relevant to determine what it's related to. Well, it's a, you know, you're roughly taking one to 3% of your overall capacity in groundwater uh, you know, out of the system as, as we see uh, aquifers become compressed. So it's an incremental change, but it's a significant change over time. Oh, it's a big number. I just, I'm not questioning it. I just wanted to know the data. One to three percent. You're talking about 100 million to 30 million. I mean, I think those are small numbers. I, I think take it. I think it's a smart bill. It has a lot of intelligence to it because we've got to change the game. I'm just trying to get a handle on what the context is. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, uh, no, and secondly, uh, another data point that I think is very relevant is if you go to the Department of Water Resources website today, uh, you see a very interesting uh, data fact that there are between one and two million active wells. Uh, across California today. I'll just let that sit in for a second. You know, we're not measuring uh, the pace and scale of withdrawals uh, in the system today. Um, second, as Senator, finally, uh, as Senator Wilkes notes, the pace of permitting uh, continues to be uh, uh, rampant uh, across the state, that we see uh, people actively developing wells without regard to a long-term water budget um, in, uh, in their place of uh, location for those wells. Um, and we can't rely on Sigma alone. As Senator Wilk noted, it will be 2042 uh, when Sigma is fully implemented. Uh, and uh, if, if we continue on this schedule, we will see uh, systematic depletion of aquifers throughout the state, including the separation of groundwater and surface water resources that won't be recoverable uh, uh, in the future. And so we're doing direct harm to farmers, to uh, uh, urban water supply, to uh, and certainly to the environment. Um, and uh, so we are here uh, that we, in, in support of this legislation. We think it's an important complement to effective implementation of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. Uh, it protects local control. It recognizes that uh, Sigma is a ground up approach. Uh, this legislation uh, is very consistent with that, protects local authority to manage uh, local supplies to protect water supplies for people, agriculture, and the environment, and uh, we, we are enthusiastically in support of the bill. I know you're just talking, but I just ask you a question, because I want you to think about this, because it's, you know, we pass these things, and they all sound good in silos, but there's unintended consequences. We're telling farmers in the Central Valley they can't have water coming through the Delta because we've got environmental challenges with respect to fish getting caught into nets. We have huge economic impacts on these farmers and the farm workers because they've got no water coming in. They haven't had any deliveries for a little bit here, a little bit there, but there were times a year they get no deliveries. So they're shut out. So what they're doing is, and I get it, they're, they're, to the extent they can grow anything, they're relying on groundwater. And then you have marry that with the drought and they're taking, sticking too many straws in the ground and there's a problem. So I don't, disagree for one second about the nature of the problem and that we have to monitor it and the like. But again, this goes back to the larger dynamic of how we deal with public policy in silos, because if you're going to have this problem, human beings got to eat, right? We got to grow the food. Now, then we've got the beneficial use law on the water world where do we waste water and we can't line canals and we can't use drip irrigation. And we've got all these just con wildly conflicting points of view, and all I'm just saying, suggesting, you know, you know, the issue of environmental water and all these other challenges we try to solve. 
Um, and I, I don't do anything other than, because like, we can't solve those problems, but I think in these kinds of legislative debates or discussions, the issue spot as we should be thinking about this. You know, we, we in this committee don't deal with governance in the larger structure. It overlaps in certain contexts. And I, so I'm trying to continue to paint the large frame about this. And there's no question this is important and has huge consequences. But I just think there's huge unintended consequences if we don't think about it holistically. Again, I, I don't need a big response. You're a big thinker on this. This is a really important area. I want you to put this into your crock pot and part of the cookout. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Please. Uh, good morning again. Again, my name is Debbie Orris. I'm with Community Water Center. Our base is the Central Valley, and part of what we do is advocate for sustainable groundwater management practices. So we are strong supporters of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act back in 2014, but we also work on the ground at the local level with counties to create strong groundwater ordinances. Um, for over a year now, I've been working with Tulare County on creating a well and a groundwater ordinance. I've helped with promoting Fresno to create a groundwater ordinance, and I've created materials for local leaders when they advocate within their own counties and jurisdictions for groundwater ordinances. Um, part of the problem is, you know, people's wells are going dry. So individual, hundreds of communities throughout the state who rely on private wells, their wells are going dry when irrigation wells down the street are pumping at very high capacities and are much deeper. Um, to kind of go to when you, the question you just had, replacement wells are exempted from this. So if your well as a farmer goes dry, you can drill a new well. It's a replacement well. It's that added capacity, that added um, demand on the system that needs to be a bit checked. Um, in Tulare County, for example, your well permit is within 24 hours. Your, your permit is accepted. There is over a year wait for domestic wells. So if you're an individual and your well goes dry, you have to live for a year or more sur surviving on bottled water or tanked water. Imagine showering with bottled water. Like that's what's left, these people are left to deal with. Um, so that's, and we support local control. Um, as I said, I've worked with counties on this, um, but no control is not an option. There's been massive delays that has caused subsidence and last of, uh, lack of water supplies. Um, the state has tried to entice counties. There was Prop 1 money um, allocated earlier this year through D uh, Department of Water Resources to create groundwater plans. Six counties in the state took up that money, three of which already had good groundwater ordinances, Merced, Stanislaw, and Calusa. The other three, including Fresno, have backed off from their plans. Um, so as I said, this bill promotes uh, local control. Counties can still implement their own ordinances to avoid the provisions of this bill. Um, but what it does is provide that backs up for areas that continue to not act. Thank you so much. Others in support? Thank you, sir. Julie Snyder, representing the Planning and Conservation League in strong support. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Kelly Doe, on behalf of California League Conservation Voters in Support, and also Me Too for Sierra Club. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, Adam Coton with the California Climate and Agriculture Network. We're a coalition of sustainable agriculture organizations and farmer member groups in support. Thank you. In the opposition. I also add a Me Too for Clean Water Action and Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability. Of course. Of course. Any opposition? Thank you, Thank you, Chair Herzberg and members of the committee. Danny Merkley with the California Farm Bureau, representing our 53,000 uh, individual and farm family members. Uh, I get it. I understand uh, what Senator Wolk is trying to do, why she's trying to do it. Um, we very much think this is the wrong approach. When Governor Brown signed the bills that became Sigma, uh, he what said- it's the right approach? The right approach is to let the process that is very quickly taking shape that we just passed in the law, the ink hasn't even dried on yet, work. But isn't there, I mean, Senator Walk raises a pretty important issue. You stick too many straws in the ground, there's only so much water down there, there's a limitation on it. 
shouldn't you have some level of control when you're in these tough situations? I, I'm just, let's get to constructive approach here. I, I get the tensions yeah. and I get the challenges. I don't, I don't mean to, to begrudge that. I just want to be constructive. You don't accept your premise. If you don't accept your premise, it's a different story. If you accept your premise, then the question is, what's the appropriate process to fix it? So to your comments earlier, I think you um, did a very good job of balancing Rob. what's, what is, of course I would say that, but I meant it also. No, but it's true, it's, I know. Um, in, I know you. In, in looking at um, why we are turning to our savings account, why we are turning to uh, the groundwater because um, our income had stopped, if you will, the surface water. Right. And, and in this approach, what we have done um, or what this bill would do is in essence tell me because I'd been putting money into my savings account over these years but I hadn't made any withdrawals. I had not exercised my groundwater right because I had an adequate surface water supply that because I hadn't accessed it, now I do not have access to it. I know, but it's not, what, what Senator Walk's saying here, if I get it, is she's just trying to bring, look, Senator Pavley did her thing. I know it gave a lot of people heartburn. I get that. But we're in a situation where we are today. Mm -hmm. We got challenges, okay? We're all in this together. We all have a savings account. We all put it in the bank. The reality is the bank fault only has a million dollars, but we all have accounts worth $3 million. That's the problem with America, that we don't print that much money. We don't make that much money. So you're correct. You have these vaults, but so does your neighbor, okay? And so we have more water rights than we have water is really what it boils down to. This will lead to some government heartburn, right? I get that. But you're just trying to get a diagnostic on what you got down there and saying before you do it, you got to, like, let's be a little cautious about this. Now, maybe you're worried about the unintended consequences down the road. But I just want to try to be constructive here because... You know, we tend to, to choose sides, the Hatfields and the McCoys, and you're on this side versus that side. But I think there's some rationality to what Senator Walk is trying to do here. And, and I've never considered myself uh, uh, a Hatfield and McCoy with, with Senator Walk. She and I have worked together on water oh, issues know, but I'm just, for a long time. Yeah. So how do we fix it? Back to when she was even younger as the mayor of the city of Davis. Oh, yeah, but she looks the same. Yeah, how do you fix it? <laughs> like the portrait of Doreen. So, <laughs> The, the, if I can go back to, to Sigma just for a second, okay. that is, and let, let me just be real clear. We were very much opposed to Sigma because of the complexity of the issue and the pace at which it was moving through the process. I understand why it was an opportunity you need to grab a hold of it. The challenge here is that now we're starting to see some of the unintended consequences from pushing through a very complex issue that is not understood by many um, in a very short time period. My concern with this bill and the approach that I would take is to let just in less than four years those first plans be developed. We are already seeing, as Senator Wolk even indicated, movement by these counties. It's not business as usual. It's not the uh, administrial where you go in and get a permit just like you did 50 years ago. Uh, it is much more challenging and much more difficult. But what, it's not everywhere. And the, you got this, you got the under the other basin that crosses. We human beings create these artificial lines that we call cities and counties. The earth doesn't respect those underground, right? You don't know what that looks like. We, that's the funniest thing about underground water. Everybody has all these rights, but we the hell don't know what's down there, really. Well, no? and, and in less than four years, we will, that will be changed because no, but Sigma at the rate does at respect. Draw, at the rate at which you're sticking straws in the ground, you may have a big problem. It may not last out four years. At least this, this gives a planning tool to figure out, look, I get the indigestion, but it does give a planning tool to the process, no? So that you can at least, if, what happens if it turns out in four years, you've got this great plan, but you ain't got no water, <laughs> you know? That's what Senator Walk's doing here. Then, let me wrap up with and I'll, this I'll, so I'll, that, uh, and I appreciate this discussion. Um, since we're in governance and finance, one of the unintended consequences of this are those landowners and farmers that, that do now have to tap into their groundwater because their surface water has been um, curtailed. What does this do to their ability 
to finance their operation that in many, many ways it hinges on their property values. What does it do uh, to their ability to pay their mortgage? What does it do to local government's tax rolls when those property values have been chopped to whatever level they will be chopped because now all of a sudden the bank says that property is not worth what we thought it was because you no longer have access to that savings account you thought you had underneath it. That's the, the impact that I would like this committee to think about and Senator Wolk to, to think about a little bit. Thank you. Can I just uh, throw one comment out for food for thought is you make that point, it reminds me of the big short because everybody's assuming values on what they don't know they have. What Senator Walk is doing is proving up the values, which may prove that you're right, that you have a savings account, or may prove that you don't have a savings account. And we're all out here living on the fact and representing to the financial industry, which I get it, that we have savings accounts. We have the rights, but it may not be there. But it, it, again, I, I'm trying to be constructive here to throw this mm -hmm. stuff out for food for thought. Yes. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, members. My name is Mary Ann Warmer Dam. I'm with the Rural Counties Association. And we have concerns with respect to the process. We do appreciate and are sympathetic to Senator Wilkes' concerns. We share those concerns. Many of our counties, as already been articulated, are stepping up to the, to the plate. The particular approach that is embedded in SB 1317 for us is a um, more of a process concern, if you will. Uh, we are in the midst of developing our plans and the data to support those plans under Sigma. And a concern is that this will divert both human and financial resources away from that very important exercise. We're looking at 2020 and 2022 as very hard deadlines for us to meet our obligation as partners in groundwater sustainability agencies. And the other somewhat complicating component for us is that the data that we will be relying upon as counties for making some of these determinations are coming from our partners in the water agency community. So there's a lot of moving parts, as you've noted, Mr. Chair, that we're trying to get our arms around. And from our perspective, 1317, a conditional use permit, as a project under CEQA, is, an, is a complication. And we're looking for more of a uh, surgical I, I approach. Said she, she expressed uh, uh, flexibility. Yes. I think what caught my attention in particular is not to get caught up in the words and what those mean, because they all have meanings in the development world and the land use world. But the notion is that no more free permits. So you got to at least have some level of understanding of what's going on. I mean, I think that's the essence of what our emeritus is doing here. Others in and if opposition. I might, yeah, please. With, with that, we are committed to working with Senator Good. Walk and her it's staff a reasonable and author. finding a, a uh, path forward. Yes. Chairman members, Karen Keene on behalf of the California State Association of Counties, we share the same concerns expressed by the rural county representative. We would also like to see the Sigma process move forward without additional requirements being in, uh, imposed in advance of the Sigma planning process. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Chairman, other members, Paul Yoder, Shaw Yoder, Anthony, here today on four of our county clients, Sacramento, San Joaquin, Merced, and Kern. We understand the center is going to convene a work, working group, and I look forward to participating in that. Good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members, <coughs> Ryan, lead California cities, and yes, unfortunately, we are opposed to this measure. We do share the concerns of our county counterparts, and we would like to work with you in the working group. Hopefully, there's a path forward on this one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dennis Albiani on behalf of California Grain and Feed Association of California Wheat Farmers Seed Association. We have... So I would like to challenge the premise that you brought that there is no understanding of what's underneath the ground. Obviously, there is. DWR has identified the, the various uh, uh, reservoirs and then has, you know, done a balance on, on where we are. If it wasn't, you wouldn't know whether there was an unintended result or not. This planning process is a comprehensive planning process in Sigma. This bill is not comprehensive. It is, a, it is operating with a chainsaw. You cannot move forward. You cannot give a permit, um, period. That's what the state's saying. Then, oh, unless you go do an ordinance. You can do an ordinance right now. The answer is local control. The answer is what you can do in counties, and there are several counties, many counties that have ordinances, and some even have, uh, um, you know, bans on certain things because that's what their local uh, group has or their sub-basin has a moratorium on additional ones. Those are already going on. Let that process play out. Let Sigma play out. This is one piece 
that now comes in um, into the, the process and creates a whole different dynamic, both economically, but also even water balance. And then the new players into a basin can't uh, recognize their right, and this is an overlying property right that we have, um, e e ongoing and establish that right while the other ones are already pumping. And so it creates a huge dynamic that I think needs to be evaluated as we go forward. Put that to the agenda of the working group. Yes. Adam Harper, California Construction Industrial Materials Association. Uh, we, we are opposed to the bill. I appreciate the senator's offer to talk, but I think the committee has heard the reasons. Um, so thank you. Perfect. We'll call, we need you. Yes. yes. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Tricia Geringer with Agricultural Council of California. With respect to the senator, um, we are also a part of the stakeholder process. We do remain in opposition to the bill. Thank you so much. Good morning, Lauren Nolan Hajik on behalf of Western Ag Processors Association, California Citrus Mutual, California Fresh Fruit Association, California Cotton Ginners and Growers Association, Nisi Farmers League, and Western Plant Health Association. We are opposed to the bill. We're concerned on what this does to the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act and what has been moving forward so far. And with DWR's current regulations that are being heard in front of the Water Commission today. And Further, we're concerned with the timelines in the bill because the conditional permit has to be based on undesirable results, which will be b determined by groundwater sustainability agencies in their plans, which won't be till 2020 or 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much. Valerie Nara for the California Chamber of Commerce. We are opposed as well, but appreciate the Senator's working group. Thank you so much. Any questions from the uh, members? You can close. So I, I already asked too many questions as it is. Do you have a question, Senator Laura? Well, commend um, Senator Walk on this issue. It's completely complicated. Yes. Okay. Uh, especially given in, in my area where, you know, 80% of, of the water we have is uh, underground. Uh, so this is imperative for us down in LA as well. So I know you'll, you'll find the appropriate balance because I think the concern, some of the concerns are valid. Uh, but I, I, I trust in your judgment. I look forward to supporting this bill, and I'd like to move it. Thank you, sir. Those have been moved by Senator Laura. You may close. First of all, thank you, Mr. Chair and members, for the discussion. Uh, I look forward to working with um, uh, those who are in opposition as well as those who are in support uh, so that we can come up with something that is practical and workable and goes to the heart of the problem. The scope of the bill is deliberately narrow. It has to do with the 21 critically overdrafted basins in California out of 500, thank you, 515. 515 basins, 21. 21 critically overdrafted, so I mean, no water, no drinking. Um, and the 120 that are indicated as um, uh, uh, high or medium of concern, including those that I represent as well. We're trying to limit it. We're, we make, um, there were amendments added, thank you very much, to um, uh, deal with uh, exemptions for uh, public health emergencies, drinking water supplies. Um, uh, this is not about existing wells that need to be replaced. Uh, anything that's being adjudicated does not fit into this. And uh, just a comment, I wish we could wait until 12, 40, uh, 2042 to, when we will have a safe yield established for the basins in California. But during the hearings, um, neither the, um, during the oversight hearing, neither the Water Board nor DWR really talked about any kind of corrective actions that might need to be taken. Uh, I think they're looking at the local communities. If we don't, uh, or if the local communities, if the counties don't take um, corrective action, there will be an explosion between now and 20. 42 of adjudications. And for those of you that have not been through an adjudication, it is a fortune. Oh, it is a fortune, an absolute fortune to do it. And it probably takes two generations or at least one generation, which is 20 years to get through it. It's not the appropriate approach. I'd like the local control. The counties have the power. I'm asking them to ask the question, is there water for a new well? Before you put the straw on the ground, ask the question. Bring it to the Board of Supervisors. With that, I ask for your I vote. Excellent. Thank you so much. And I appreciate uh, the bill's been moved. This is due pass as amended regarding comments three, four, and five to approach. But I, and again, my understanding with respect to this uh, uh, 
is, is that you're, you've got putting a working group together. I thought there were a lot of, and I heard, yes. saw you shaking your head up and down, a lot of very thoughtful observations with respect to the process side of this. Correct. The question is, is it necessary? That's a different story, but if you do do the process, there's still some ironing out that needs to be due that sounds right. like you're working great. Right. Uh, Secretary, open the roll. Hertzberg? Aye. Hertzberg, aye. Wynn? No. Wynn, no. Bell? Fernandez? Aye. Fernandez, aye. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Morlock? No. Morlock, no. Pavley? Pavley, aye. aye. Four, two. Four, two. Do we miss anybody? Um, Bell. Bell. Bell, okay. So let's, oh, let's uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's, let's go through the roll here for, for Senator Hernandez. Um, if we can start with file item number one. SB 898, Senator Wynn, do pass to appropriations. The current vote is 6-0. Secretary, open the roll. Fernandez, Fernandez, aye. 7-0, that measures out. File item number two, SB 958, Senator Laura, do pass as amended to appropriations. It's currently 4-2. to two. Secretary, open the roll. Fernandez, Fernandez, Hernandez, aye. Hernandez, aye. 5-2. 5-2, measure is out. Next, file item number, Wachowski's done, right? Because uh, Fran's holding off, right? Yes. Okay, file number three, Wachowski, I indicated before, is out. File number four, Pavley, SB 1262, do pass to appropriations. Currently, the vote is four to two. Secretary, open the roll. Fernandez, aye. Fernandez, aye. Five, two, measures out. Next, file item number five, I think we have it. Anyone we're missing, Senator Bell, okay? Fernandez, What's, 1416. Which one? Oh, yeah, but I knew 13. Okay. File item number six, SB 1416, Senator Stone, due pass as amended to appropriations. Um, the currently that stands six is six to zero. zero. Secretary, open the rule. Fernandez. Aye. Fernandez. Fernandez, aye. Measure is out. File item number seven, 1476, Governance and Finance Committee meet, uh, bill, due pass to appropriations. Uh, it's six to zero. Secretary, open the rule. Fernandez. Aye. Fernandez, aye. Fernandez, aye. Seven zero measures out. Next consent calendar. File items number 1480 and 1481. Uh, it's currently six to zero. Secretary, open the roll. Fernandez, aye. Fernandez, aye. Fernandez, aye. Both measures are aye on both. Both measures are out. Thank you very much, Senator Hernandez. We're just waiting for Senator Bell. Can we call his office and see if he wants to join in on which one we're waiting for in Bell on Wolk? SB 1317. Thank you, Senator Hernandez. Just call him, see if he wants to add on. We'll hold up for him. Yeah, I want to just. Open the roll on file number, uh, on SB 1317, walk file item number uh, five. It's currently four to two, due pass uh, as amended to appropriations. Motion by Senator O'Lara. Uh, Secretary, open the roll. Bell, aye. Bell, aye. Okay, aye. five to two, measure is out. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you so very much for all those minions that started to stay on television. Thank you for helping out.